जेठ मलानी साहब हाँ बोल रहा हूँ दैट सर दाऊद इब्राहिम दाऊद कहा था ना मैंने बॉम्बे का नया बाप मनिया सुबह गंगू चांद थी और चांद ही रहेगी अमेरिका ने ओसामा को अंदर घुस के मारा था तो ये काम हम क्यों नहीं कर सकते भविष्यवर्ती बंबई पुलिस सबके Pleased to introduce S. Hussain Zaidi as our speaker for this evening. Uh, I must say he is one among us, uh, our own homegrown investigative crime writer. Um, this is a rather long introduction, but as I was researching it, I, it was so full of surprises that I think I must share it with you, uh, Mr. Zaidi. Um, Uh, he started as an investigative journalist and became the resident editor of the Asian Age. Later, he worked for several other periodicals, including the Indian Express, Midday, and Mumbai Mirror. Mr. Zaidi has written on Mumbai mafia for several decades. His first book, you've probably heard about it, Black Friday, written in 2002, detailed the 1993 Mumbai bombings. The book was adapted two years later in 2004 into a film by Anurag Kashyap, also titled Black Friday. His other books include Mafia Queens of Mumbai, written in 2011, My Name Is Abu Salem in 2014, Baikala to Bangkok in 2014, Mumbai Avengers 2015, Class of 83 in 2019, and his recent books include. 11th hour and the eighth and the end game written just recently 2020 i i wonder whether i've left out any any other books <laughs> in in dongri to dumbai six decades of mumbai mafia mr zaidi presents a historical account of mumbai mafia the book was adapted into the film shootout at wadala by sanjay gupta and later into a netflix series His other books adapted to films are Kabir Khan's film Phantom in 2015 based on his book Mumbai Avengers Class of 83 in 2020 based on the book of the same name and most recently Gangubai Kathiawadi based on the book Mafia Queens of Mumbai written in 2012 He is also associate producer of the HBO documentary Terror in Mumbai which is based on the 2611 attacks in mumbai he is founder of the publishing firm blue salt and owns the blog the writers room along with his close friend vikram chandra it seems mr zaidi never intended to become a crime writer uh, it was vikram chandra who suggested that he should uh, write uh, you know the biographies of uh, uh, the people whom he had uh, he was interviewing and uh, he he made headlines when he interviewed daud ibrahim in 1997 for the indian express other colorful stories about him include even being kidnapped in baghdad <laughs> when he was interviewing people close to saddam hussein and was only saved because the kidnapper thought he was a close friend of amitabh bachchan <laughs> <laughs> so we are pleased to have uh, uh, mr s hussain zaidi as, at this year's bombay gym lit fest Morning. I'm sure he has many interesting things to tell us. He is a very appropriate speaker for the topic that we have chosen for the Lit Fest, which is uh, all about uh, you know who owns the character uh, created by the author, and then moving to films and other forms of uh, performance. So let's hear Mr. Zaidi. The floor is yours now. I'm really sorry about this long introduction. I know some of you must have felt like dozing off but thank you you have made my task but difficult after this ladies and gentlemen it's really a privilege and an honor to be addressing all of you today again and i must thank my friend reena who made this possible uh, honestly speaking after this introduction it is really difficult to i mean match up to the standards that she has set for me i mean she has been exaggerating a lot when she was talking about me and i don't know how to dispute her or how to question her when she was in her full flow so uh, one of the best things about this meeting is that i have a wall clock right in front of me i know i have to keep a control on myself 
so uh, what we'll do is we will try to do this small talk in about 20 minutes time and then we will have a question answer session for 15 minutes i hope that works for all of you and you won't mind this so uh, i'm supposed to talk about the characters uh, in my book and I really don't know how to start but when I came here I was trying to prepare uh, my discussion I thought it would be basically a discussion in two parts uh, the characters which you have in your non-fiction stories where those are real life characters who really exist in reality and then the characters in fiction novel who actually what we do in fiction is Okay, I'll, I'll come to that point when we uh, come to uh, this, that discussion. So here, uh, again, in this characters, you have male and you have female. My, my favorite species is female. I just like talking about women characters. I don't misquote me or don't misinterpret me. I'm saying women characters. I love talking about those dangerous, very, very deadly, very lethal women that I write about which is why despite all the books that she mentioned and she missed talking about Mafia Queens of Mumbai. That is my favorite book and I have profiled 13 very dangerous women in that book. So, I mean, one of them you saw, Gangubai, in net, on this Netflix and Sanjay Lavansali. He uh, actually talked about this character when we met. So, uh, Sanjay and I met about 10 years ago when that book was recently out. And he was so inspired by Gangubai and her struggles in her life that 10 years ago he said he wanted to direct that movie and he wanted to adapt that story in this book. But then, you know, a lot of things happened. He got busy into some historicals and then there was COVID and there were so many problems. But then when he made this character, he brought it alive on screen. Now I must say that there have been a lot of uh, books of mine which have been converted into movies. Sanjay Leela Bansali has got it accurate. Gangu Bhai was exactly like what we see Alia Bhatt on screen. Initially, I was very skeptical whether he will be, Alia will be able to, you know, portray the character in all, you know, uh, the way that woman was exploited and she was dumped in Kamatipura and then she rose to become a crusader for the rights of this downtrodden and this exploited woman. But when it, it, it came very close, I mean, say 95% of that, it is accurate, except for that Razia Begum, that that transgender was not needed. But maybe Sanjay was looking for a very formidable villain, a very negative character. And he thought maybe Razia can be negative only if she is that made into a eunuch character. Well, so a uh, couple of interesting things about characters here is that when we are in non-fiction uh, stories looking at the character we try to get into the head of that person we start thinking like that it is psychologically very damaging i mean i've gone through this twice and thrice and uh, then i have to go for some treatment after that i have done that tiger women's character because you know these characters are very these are not human beings these are not normal human beings these are very psychotic kind of people now to think like tiger women you know, to, you know, create mayhem and carnage in Mumbai just because his office was burned down in Mayim. Which normal insane person will do that? He, I mean, I don't know if you guys are aware, on March 12, 1993, that was the biggest terrorist act in the world until 9-11 happened. Now, because we are third world, people don't, you know, give us that kind of footage and importance that it, India has suffered from this kind of you know, destruction earlier. But to imagine one man for his personal insult is going to create such an act, such a carnage, which will be considered to be the biggest terrorist act. And you know, some 256 people were killed in that and more than 800 people were injured. So to, to look at that character, you know, this man was very compassionate to his family. He was supposedly very tender and very kind. But there was something which was very really abnormal in his head. As we, I mean, when we talk, when, I mean, I, there, is, there is a small group of writers fraternity who bounce up their ideas and talk to each other. So we have kind of, you know, thought, have some development terms for ourselves. You know what we say, that when we talk about these kind of characters, we say that uska third floor mein problem tha. So we say this is third floor. So when we say this is third floor, and when we say third floor mein problem tha, 
उसके बाद थर्ड फ्लोर में देर वॉज नो टेनेंट यानी सी वी आर टॉक इन आर इन ओल लैंग्वेज देर इज नो टेन दैट इज ही हैड नो ब्रेन हीज नो ग्रे मैटर हियर ही वॉज टोटली मैड ही वॉज ही वॉज अ ब्रूट इन इज हेड अ बीस्ट इन इज हेड दैट्स वॉट टाइगर म्यूमन वॉज सो वॉट ही डिड वॉज वेरी स्मार्टली दिस मैन पुट टूगेदर आई साई दिस मैन गॉट आई कस्टम्स ऑफिसर फ्रॉम रायगढ़ एरिया फ्यू ऑफिसर्स फ्रॉम मुंबई पुलिस एंड देन यूथ्स whose emotions were very easy to be exploited he got these three four people together and then perpetrated his act of bomb blast you know there are certain things about tiger memon which i will just try to explain to you how he cannot be considered a human being at all so there was a small act that once uh, someone told something to his wife ke aap kitni khoobsurat lag rahi hain i don't know from what angle this could be considered offensive but tiger memon procured an ak47 and went to this office and he emptied his entire ak47 on the legs of this man who had paid compliment to his wife the man was after that never able to walk he was reduced to his wheelchair all his life he said i could have killed you but why i didn't kill you because i want you to remain alive and remain crippled and helpless entire life so that next time you cannot say that to a good looking woman ki aap kitni khoobsurat lag rahi hain so i mean i don't know what kind of man that would be so my my whole contention was that when we try to describe this kind of character when we try to bring this kind of character to pages it is so difficult to think as a human being you have to think and get into his head and then write the whole story in black friday i took 4 years to write honestly speaking when david davidar of penguin asked me to write i behaved like a very cocky journalist i said oh i'll finish it in 6 weeks you know why journalists are very arrogant people actually i don't know why maybe unko bhi third floor ka problem hota hai so and i i been to this journey myself so i have no qualms in admitting that yes i have been through this journey of arrogance myself so when david said that why don't you write this book uh, on bombay blast at by that time cbi and mumbai police have already filed a charge sheet which, which was running into 10000 pages and there were a lot of uh, police confessional statement and there was i mean there were a lot of officers who were my friend so for me i thought it was a cake walk 6 weeks you know i mean i have say about 45 days to write a book of 200 pages it will not be that difficult but when you start writing and when you start seeing the characters characters like tiger meeman characters like rakesh maria who became a mumbai police commissioner later at that time he was dcb detection crime and not just that you know when you go out to find that there are so many other layers in this story you know tiger meeman who was so possessive about his wife or who was like so compassionate to his family also had one weakness now imagine this is a terrorist act my whole thing is that this guy was trying to be a jihadi he was trying to be a islamist who was trying to take revenge for the mumbai communal rights but if he is doing that then he should be solely focused on that part no even in that he was competitive with another guy called mohammed dosa mohammed dosa was a smuggler a hawala racketeer now this guy dosa and tiger meeman were rivals they were rivals until then for smuggling and hawala i can understand but who will compete for a terrorist act that who is going to become a better terrorist and why would you do that but dosa himself got RDX from uh, Dubai and Pakistan, and even Tiger Women got some RDX from uh, Pakistan. Now both these guys, while they are doing it, they were using different channels. Dosa was using landing spots in Porbandar, and Tiger Women was using landing spots in Raigad area, which belong to Dawood Ibrahim. Why were they competing? What is the reason for competition? Tell me. I mean, why would they compete? And if at all their their aim is very uniform and common to take revenge for whatever excesses that, that have happened in Mumbai in 1992 riots, what is the reason for competition? They all were both of them were competing to get the attention from one very ugly looking prostitute. They wanted her attention and they wanted to prove supreme in front of her. Her name was Roma. She was very ugly. very foul mouthed very bad very unattractive i'm just trying to tell you the difficulty that a writer faces when he has to write something about these characters he is a man who's so powerful considering that he wants to cause so much loss to 
this country is trying to take revenge but because he loves one woman roma who actually loves dosa he has to get her attention and he has to cause this carnage in mumbai i have written all these things in uh, mumbai and these are not the figment of my imagination these are absolutely well documented facts in the files and dossiers of cbi and as well as mumbai police so it was because of roma that dosa and tiger fought and then they made an excuse of 1992 communal riots and which is what we the mumbai suffered at that time tiger meeman so that is one character that i i tried to write and i don't know how much i succeeded but in the end my wife once while she was fighting with me you know wives fight a lot with authors i don't know which author will have a very nice peaceful life because for them they think that you know i am giving more attention to these characters than i am giving attention to my wife so don't take offense but i'm just trying to say that these are my personal problems also here yeah. so she said that hussein i don't know if you are more obsessed with tiger beeman or roma was <laughs> so i i i can't tell her that this is my first book and i it it is supposedly my big ticket to the world of writing and i was not sure if this book will ever become big if i don't give this much attention so i took 4 years to finish this book and in the end when the book came out and it was successful so you know how wives are if a husband is successful she will be very happy if my book would have flopped she was like, okay i knew you were going to be a disaster <laughs> so well my wife kind of forgave me after the success and anurag kind of helped me in by turning that book into a movie and then all is well that ends well so this was tiger maven i will talk about some uh, women characters in my book mafia queen so uh, you know why writing about male characters is easier than female characters because there are a lot of women here i'm a bit scared about you know talking about them but god give me courage and i hope you guys will not feel bad if i go overboard you know for men it's very formulaic they are very predictable you know they will always you know you know that it's a plus b plus c equals to a b c for women it is not the case they are totally unpredictable they can do anything and the way they they the mind work the mind functions they can multitask 20 things at one time men are just incapable of doing this so i am not trying to criticize women kind here i am trying to say that men are you know there there are no competition for women so if there is a lady boss and if she has to run her gang she has sorted out 20 things in her head at that particular moment while a man cannot do in one single thing in one minute so this is what how women are so lethal and so dangerous and i will substantiate this with examples for example there is this woman jena bai uh, daru wali i don't know if you have read mafia queens of mumbai my book but jena bai is one unlettered woman she has not gone to school she has no education at all she was into uh, bootlegging and those other kind of crimes but then this woman became so powerful only because she can troubleshoot so many complex issues so easily that haji mastan when he was faced with the biggest problem of his life he could not think of anyone but jinabai imagine if daud ibrahim if he is in trouble he will not think of anyone but he will think of jena masi why jena masi was jena bai and daud's mother amina were friends now i don't know if you guys are aware that mumbai crime branch in those days it was very well organized and very nice functional police force these days it is not so well so in those days there was you know these three cops uh, god bole keshav sastrabude and others who were you know planning and trying to sort out lot of crime problems in those days so even these fantastic brilliant investigators have to think and take help from jena bai at that time so while all these guys were at one point of time on a crossroad where they don't know how to solve a problem and jena bai became the most sought after negotiator at that moment imagine an uneducated illiterate woman have no background of negotiation skills is not gone to any business school but this woman at that time sat and hammered out the biggest truths in the this world i would say because she got so many warring factions together she got daud ibrahim pathan mafia haji mastan crime branch cops 
and a builder lobby all of them at one juncture and she made them to agree to something which she wanted and at that time first time mumbai mafia had peace for 5 years and she also engineered one very unsavory thing for the city that she got builder lobby and mafia together and in the end actually she died a life of poverty but what happened was that mafia and daud came together and crime branch and mumbai police and mumbai gangsters started collaborating one woman see how she must have thought how she must have engineered all this you know alignments and all these people together that only a woman can think like that i will talk about another woman i have to also talk about this fiction characters but well sapna didi i don't know if you have heard this woman at all in 1980s daud ibrahim was to create a new world unkillable people cannot even imagine that daud can be killed or you know he can be neutralized not even mumbai police not rw no one can even think of you know having a plot where they can kill daud ibrahim his rivals you know whoever even thought or even imagined that were diluted in no time in this very difficult scenario one woman one widow actually ashraf khan whose husband mahmud kalia was shot dead outside the airport in those days our flight international flights came to santa cruz so he just landed from dubai and he came out of the airport one officer emmanuel amolik shot him dead because daud called this guy and said you kill this man mahmud kalia because he dares to differ with me so this woman was a housewife ashraf khan when he realized her husband was killed by daud she decided to take revenge and then she went out she got trained herself in hand to hand combat in using guns in driving all kinds of vehicles truck jeep bike whatever and she, she became the most dangerous killing machine at that time and she caused lot of harm to daud so you know what happened was that i and my friend vikram chandra both of us were in those days vikram was writing his book sacred games i don't know if you guys have read or heard about this book and we have just become new friends so our one of those meetings that vikram and i had was with this guy mahmood uh, not sorry husain ustara who was actually a guy who was one rival of daud ibrahim trying to uh, fight with daud and kill his people so sapna didi uh, befriended husain ustara so that ustara can train him so vikram chandra and i managed to track him down ustara in a some paiduni place underground area we managed to meet uh, ustara there and then ustra was narrating the story of sapna didi now imagine someone who has died 20 years ago i don't even have access to her photograph but what police told me what ustra told me and how he described the whole story of sapna didi you have to get into the head of this woman who is only obsessed with one thing that she has to kill daud come what may and then the way she plans so see, see the whole thing is that when you are writing a story you have to explain the motivations of the character you have to uh, write that what the character thought and why the character thought like that it is very important to get into those head and rationalize and imagine that what that person is doing so it is not fiction but it is being a craft of storytelling where you actually explain the motivation of the character so sapna didi the way her whole character graph happens and how she has made daud so insecure that daud decided that before this woman comes and kills him in dubai he has to kill her my point is how much she would have made daud insecure in these 3 4 years that daud took note of this woman she had made a very audacious plan she wanted to get a team of people and we all know that there was a time in sharja match was at its peak we all were like looking at india pakistan matches in sharja so she decided that daud was a permanent attendant uh, of these matches he is having enclosure to himself he and his gang guys are always sitting in this and they are watching this match so she thought that because we cannot carry weapons inside the stadium they all will carry umbrellas and they all will carry water bottles so in those days the bottles were not of plastic they were like uh, glass bottles they all will carry bottles and they all will carry umbrellas with the tip of the umbrella dipped in poison 
so once if indians or pakistani players will hit a six and there is a pandemonium inside the stadium all these guys will jump inside those enclosures those who are having umbrellas will stab daud or those who have broken bottles will kill daud attack daud and they can kill daud in this manner so now you know why i say that women are more lethal and brave and brainy and men are not she had unfortunately married a spineless nincompoop nazir sheikh at that time and he was scared of daud he always thought that if she manages to kill daud in sharja some will come to him and he will be in trouble or his police force will put him into trouble this man could not digest courage of this woman the bravery of this woman and he decided the only way to protect himself is if he can squeal on her to daud she called daud in dubai he called daud in dubai nazir sheikh and told him that actually my wife is trying to kill you so you better do something about it imagine what a cowardly act for a husband daud took note of it and then he ensured that he sent his men and he again thinking like a psychotic man whose third floor is, is a very dangerous third floor he said that he should not shoot her dead you guys should only stab her and i think in 1994 that was one of the most gruesome killing for mumbai police she was stabbed 22 times and some of her wounds were inflicted on her genitals just to make it a lesson for other women that they should never think of taking on daudi bhai see these are the characters that you have in real life and these are the people that you think when you try to write about them in the stories and i mean that's how i'm saying that the whole skill of storytelling or portraying a character comes out when you go through all these layers you cannot feel sorry for this character you cannot root for this character you have to remain objective at the same time you have to depend solely of what you have here in document whatever your guys have told you in interviews so you cannot create you cannot fictionalize you cannot imagine you have to remain loyal to the information that you have on the piece of paper on the document or maybe the cops who have shared information with you so same is with tiger women same is with sapna didi janabai or all these characters that i told you i'll just talk about abu salim uh, and then i'll come to my characters in fiction you know abu salim is one don who still in uh, jail and i think 7 8 years he'll be out and then a few years after that he'll be in politics and maybe 10 15 years after that he'll be a cm so we all know that this is what is going to happen in politics so this is anyone can become our cm anyone can become anyone in in our politics so we all have i mean at least i know the lk advani has given a written commitment that abu salim will not be hanged there will be no death penalty for him and will not keep him in prison beyond 25 years so the man was brought to mumbai uh, india in 2005 he has already been in prison for 17 years now so it's only 8 years more that this man is here so i once when i approached abu salim in sessions court i saw him he was dressed in branded clothes very expensive leather shoes very nice belt and he was like uh, having his tandoori or something in uh, scout premises so i told him i'm writing a book and i wanted your comment on it so he says no you don't write book on me you write a script on me, my life i said no i'm not a script writer i can only do a book he said see you're not understanding aapki book koi nahi padega movie sab log dekhenge they all will write they will come to my movie and they will be so you know attentive with such rapt attention that nobody is even going to go out for a smoke if you write a script on my story i said that i can't do he threatened me in a very polite manner but i did not understand whatever is trying to threaten me i mean i have been threatened earlier so like daud ibrahim says zadi saab if you write ke main drug kanda karta hu to bombay mein to bahut se accident hote rehte hain so you know i imagine one truck coming i am on the road and so aise these things keep happening with me and then this story that she said about amisha bakkan i almost lost my life in iraq with this threat so amisha this abu salim threat didn't work with me and i went ahead and wrote this book you know abu salim this man had only one point program in his life he wanted to make money and he wanted to become famous in bollywood he wanted that all bollywood personalities should be scared of him and this guy was having affair with lot of heroines at the same time terrorizing them and threatening them and knocking money out of them this man was from azamgarh and again as i said he didn't know only three he knew only three words of english 
yes, no, and thank you. Beyond that, he knew nothing at all. But to imagine a guy who comes down from Azamgarh, comes to Mumbai, he was a salesman in a Jogeshwari mall uh, selling bells and perfumes. But then he got into some bad company, and then at one point of time, he thought he should try his hand in movie. He has also acted in a couple of movies, by the way. So it's, I think the movie name is Nirali. Nobody has gone to watch that movie. It's a different thing. But he he like tried his hand in Bollywood. So he, you know, one during the course of conversation, he he revealed to me that actually this is bad luck that is in mafia. Otherwise, he looks better than Salman Khan. If only luck was on his side, he would have been a hero. I mean, a bigger hero than Salman. So these are the kind of characters that we deal in real life and. I mean, I said that you don't have to even add a single dot or point to improve and enhance that character, the shades of gray in this character. They already exist in him. I have gone beyond my time. Just give me the last five minutes. I have to talk about the fiction characters, and then we can have question answers. Now, in this fiction world, you have a bit of a liberty. I have done four fictions, one of which is already uh, made into a movie. Phantom, I know you guys have seen that movie. Uh, it is Saif Ali Khan's most successful movie so far. So it made 85 crores at that time. It is based on Mumbai Avengers. And after that, I wrote three more fiction novels. So in fiction, you already have uh, the liberty of playing with the character, of improving on the character. So if at all you guys are aspiring to write something on fiction, my suggestion is that one fiction character can be blended with several of them and made one. For example, I don't know if you've seen Mardani. There's a woman cop story where Rani Mukherjee played Mardani in that. The whole idea and story was conceived by me, the first one. Second one, I, I'm not uh, connected to the second one, but first one. So what I did with Mardani was that there were six women cops who were inducted into crime branch. So I kind of put all six of them in a mixer grinder, and then I you know, mashed them, and what the shake that came out of the six cops was one woman, Mardani. So I have blended someone's physical prowess, some cop being very intelligent, someone being very good analyst and observant person, somebody who is uh, you know, having other uh, skills and other advantage and merits. So I have added all these shades into one woman, Mardani. And then you, what you saw in Mardani is actually a real character, but it's not one woman or it's not one character. It's a blend of six cops into one. So my whole idea is that in characterizations, you can think and there's no limit. In fiction, you cannot be you know, controlled by uh, these kind of parameters that you're controlled in the non-fiction stories. One last point, I am totally uh, interested in old people being physically very strong. And at that time, uh, it was questioned very highly that how a 50 or 60 year old man can be so physically strong. But in Mumbai Avengers, my main protagonist is a 60-year-old man. Actually, he's a retired army colonel. And he's a physically very, very fit and a very strong man. So with that, I wrote a couple of other stories like Leventar and Endgame. And again, my, my protagonist, who is 60-plus man, is physically very strong, very fit, very muscular. People thought that this idea is totally out of the world and this is not workable until they realized this movie, Vikram, where Kamal Hassan is an old man, retired guy, but he's shown physically very fit, muscular, and very brave guy. So my these heroes, actually, they are old people, but they behave at uh, the age of 35, 40 years. So they don't play their age, which is why we accept them that they can be that strong. But actually, if a man, so I just thought I'll add this point because my, my, my male audience would be very upset that I'm only praising women, and I don't say nice things about uh, male species. So the whole idea is, that I thought that these male characters, even if they are 60, they could be very strong and they could be very physically fit. And I have seen this kind of examples in special forces. I have seen this in our army, where people are 59, 60, but they can move huge boulders. They can swim huge distances. So it was those kind of characters where I put together and I made one guy as my protagonist in Mumbai Avengers or Leventar and other stories. I think I've, I've taken uh, more than what I promised for. So if there are any more questions, I'll, I am ready to entertain those questions here. Sorry, my apologies. Yes, ma'am. 
थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम जी थैंक यू थैंक यू See, those are excuses. People justify no, the crime. It happened in December. And this happened in March. I remember so, that date very clearly. Yeah, no, no. You are correct. That's what he said. But actually, this was the motive of those youngsters who were picked up. For Tiger, even it was a different thing. See, why someone, a criminal, always try to justify his crime? He says he has to take revenge. His wife has betrayed him. His friend has kind of you know. This is the thing. This is the event of Babri Masjid, which antagonized over. Which of course, it must have antagonized the common Muslim people, Every but Nigel Mayon was not a common man. He is a criminal, he is a smuggler, he is a psychotic killer. So for him, Babi Masjid is an excuse to get these guys into action so that they can get into revenge and welfare mode. Otherwise, Aisha in Pakistan. Revenge against who? Sorry? Revenge against who? Reject, revenge against the government. Ah, exactly. That's yeah. So Tiger Mewan had no such motive. He didn't want to do any such thing. But he got his use in the name of it. Okay. And the second part is, I think in Gangubai, they have your character of Jenna, Ji. which is has been put into Gangubai because she becomes a negotiator. Well, Gangubai herself was a negotiator at one point time. No, but that that make this character of Jenna, which I now remember clearly, yeah. yeah. is Gangubai who does the negotiations with Haji Mastan. That is that no, is that, is, uh, that guy that Pathan that you've seen of Ajay uh, Devgan uh, is actually Karim Lala's character. I thought that ha achar, it was. It Karim is not Haji Mastan. It is Karim Lala because Haji Mastan was not a Pathan. He was more of a smuggler. So that Ajay Devgan. Haji Mastan's daughter, I have taught. Okay. In college. Achha. That's why I used to get some of this. So Haji Mastan was not into violent things at all. See, Karim Lala was a violent man. He was into <laughs> beating up people and stabbing them. Like Ajay Devgan was shown beating that person. Haji Mastan was a guy who was not into violence, beating up or whatever. And the third part, which you have not, I think you were very diplomatic in saying, also gangs were created within the police, between the two gangs. There were some who were pro, one gangster or some who were, I know some of them. No, of course, uh, you are right about it. I wrote one book called Class of 83, in which I clearly wrote that Mumbai police is very proud to say that if they have D gang, we are P gang. So, they are, so we have, they have clearly and said, they, they so all... They were doing the encounters one against the other ah, so and taking revenge for a. But, and they were all. So these they are businessmen they in corrupted uniform. corrupted the police. Yeah, yeah. These they are people who are in uniform, but they are actually businessmen. They're out to make money and, you exactly. know, make their life good. So he yeah. did corrupt the police force also. That's a part which you did not mention. That's why I said. I just thought it is about characters. Otherwise, if I have to say about Mumbai police, I can say a lot about it. Uh, there's a lot. You should write one book only on the Mumbai <laughs> police, especially yes, sir. now. Sir. Yeah, yeah. I must congratulate you for your fascinating story of, you, of all these uh, characters. Uh, <clears throat> have you ever thought about uh, having some help or making uh, this kind of uh, case presentation uh, to the police people as well as to the uh, you know the psychiatrists, the doctors? Uh, what what sort of uh, you know, interaction should take place uh, between these characters and the psychologists and the people who are talking about, like Nandini, in the social workers. See, actually, uh, for us uh, in our justice system, we are not into more into counseling or reformation or rehabilitation. We are more into, uh, you know, sentencing, punishment, isolating the prisoners. You will not see the, what we see in US and other countries where they are trying to reform the person. For them, they don't think that the man is bad. They just think he got possessed or at that time he got over by that particular emotion of crime. Otherwise, he's not a bad person and everyone is good. In, in our case, we think that someone who has committed crime, if he's put behind the bars for that many years or in solitary confinement, he will, he will be punished and others will be deterred by committing the crime. So we need to have this thing in our system where we should talk about rehabilitation, changing, reformation, and trying to bring about changes in them and their character. We are yet to have these kind of measures.
No, you have done a lot of work with meeting these people, and uh, it will be worthwhile to have this case presentation uh, uh, to be done uh, for uh, educational purpose as well. My whole problem is I, I mean, over the period of years while writing about these people, uh, I don't know whether I should make this admission at this moment. But I have become very rigid and radical against these people. I don't think these are human beings, and I don't think they should be spared. And I don't think we should allow the trial to continue for 10, 14 years, 15 years. I don't know why we are doing that, the farce of a trial. These men should be punished right in front of everyone. And they should be made an example so that no one should think of bombing, killing, raping, or murdering anyone. I'm really sorry. I just got you know, carried by my emotions. But why to have trial? Why are we having trial for 17 years? Why do we carry trial for 20 years? Aren't we aware, aren't we sure that this man is so bad? Why reform these people? See, uh, no, no question of reforms. Yeah. This is question of uh, what plays, uh, for example, what you just now said, uh, they were all simple rivalry kind of thing, not the basic uh, the, the Hindu-Muslim divide or something of that sort. Uh, it's worth bringing this thing out and uh, to understand, and especially when you have so much of exposure with these people, uh, to do something worthwhile um, to improve the uh, societal kind of uh, 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 reaction. Um, I, I can't just now uh, be very clear about this, but since you have wealth of information about this, it will be worthwhile I mean, Mumbai uh, have this that, uh, to yeah. do something on this on educational purpose. So, well, these are these are beyond redemption. But what I I think is trying to say that there should be a think tank, you know, created by the government, where there should be a group of people who will try to work on this and do whatever good work they can. So I think that is the prerogative of the government to form such a group or to have a think tank of a few intellectuals who can bring about this change and this understanding and. So I think that's government, but government is not having time for that. Who thinks about people, masses, or even is busy, so, so is Mumbai police. So I don't think they'll do it or there's any inclination or interest in doing such a thing. Yes. Yes, ma'am. and a 10th floor also. Oh, so yes. when you look at a character and its complexity, how do you know as a writer that the character is complete? Because you obviously have a limited number of pages. So that's my first question. And the second is that in characters, there are certain traits that are very ephemeral. You know, they're so light and fleeting. And how do you, uh, how do you put them on a page? Thank you very much for asking this question. I wish someone had, or I wish I, had, I should have made this candid admission while I was talking about it. Despite all this research and all this thinking, all these interviews and uh, legwork, I must admit in all honesty that I could not claim that I have done justice to even one single character in its entirety. I have not been able to even portray one character completely. I mean, I've tried my best. Maybe I might have come closer by 50%. So Tiger Raymond, perhaps he's much more brutal and more heinous and more uh, gross than whatever I could even write or depict in my pages. Same for others, like I could not bring about the courage and there's one word which I like about in Yiddish term, kuspa, that I could not even express the kuspa of Sapna Didi in my pages. So I, I'm sure that what the question is you're saying is, I have not been able to say, bring about any character in complete honesty and the way it should be. Imagine if someone can't do that with his wife after 27 years. So <laughs> how can I do that with those characters whom I've only spent few months reading and doing that? So that is one thing. And what was the second question? Sorry. The second question is that there are certain traits which are very ephemeral, you know, like fleeting. And they're very light. So it's not necessary that you can catch them. And how have you come across some of these traits? And how would you put them onto a... So you're talking about the impulsive behavior of these kind of people who are, who can kind of get driven by the impulse and do something just spontaneously without any forethought? Are you trying to say that? So impulsiveness is a characteristic which you can use through actions and put forward in your character. Yeah. But let's say like madness, 
you know, you come across monsters that are mad. And so madness is an example I can just think offhand, but there would be other characteristics which one can't basically pinpoint, you know, exactly. Like you say, brave, courageous, you know, they're all strong, yeah, yeah, big words. Yeah, yeah. But there are certain qualities, you know, like somebody would have, uh, I don't know, certain hidden traits, hidden... Uh, so there, there is certainly which I find uh, in the gangsters or in the bad guys, all of them, without exception, are very cowardly people. You will not find a single guy who can be considered to be daredevil, reckless, or whatever. They all were very cowardly. So my whole point is that when you come across such a person, for example, I'm yet to meet a Mumbai police officer who could be very non-corrupt or very honest person. My thing is that since you don't find these exceptions, these are only exceptions which we see in stories, and <laughs> so it is it is very difficult to go for those rare nuances of the character that you're talking about the fleeting moments because generally what you see are bad guys when there is so much of black are you going to look for one white dot in that black uh, thing my whole point is that which is why i never i mean made effort to go exploring that part at all in my characters thank you my sorry I, I tried doing that in class of 83. I think I'm the first guy to write about Mumbai police having 100 crore club. Before that, no one wrote about it. So in this book, I've clearly wrote that how much before a poli uh, movies like Gajini or all those now having 100 crore uh, club, I wrote that first time ever Mumbai police encounter specialist were having an elite 100 crore club. I wrote that a whole chapter in this class of 83. Now my point is that there's a way that you can criticize them, you can expose them, but I try to be very discreet and diplomatic so that I should not get sued or taken to court while I'm doing all these things. Yes, ma'am. I wanted to ask you, did I miss you when you said you had to seek help because your characters, your non-fiction characters yeah, were yeah. so, um, in, not just intense, but bad. Thank you. you. You noted something which really, I don't know, others. So, I, have not paid so that so has you a are a journalist, journalist, yes. yeah. So yeah. I also want to know how did you cross that barrier then? Uh, Thank you. After writing some of the books, I remained depressed for a long time. For a month or two months, I could not sleep, and I remember that I passed a certain time, two months, not getting a single moment of sleep, and then I have to go on a heavy dose of sedatives. So I had to take a lot of sleeping tablets, and then. Uh, I was very depressed and then somebody told me that I should try to seek help in some spiritualism so that I can be a normal person again because I was very irritable, I was very angry and I was, I was trying to look at how the, the whole system was so lopsided, how the justice system was not doing enough to ensure that things will be okay because you realize that the cops themselves were not the paragon of virtue so even they, they were excessive, the criminals were doing bad. So I finished a book, I submitted the manuscript, and I remember that for months I had to go through a lot of trouble. But then I realized that I cannot give up and I have to do this because they were paying me a decent amount of money and I, I have some responsibility towards writing what I was doing. So depression, sleeping tablets, spiritualism, all these things I've gone through to ensure that I remain normal. Can I just elaborate on that? As a journalist, you covered the same people but you did not experience this as much as when you were a writer, an author. So as a journalist, you, your work is very limited, very brief. You are supposed to do a spot reporting of 400 words or maybe a feature of 1200 words. You don't have to delve into a character in an in-depth manner. You don't need a very every single interview or every single person to know whatever he was doing. But when you do a book which is of 70,000 words, 80,000 words, and when that whole journey takes you for four years, five years, so imagine for being something for years, if you're into that atmosphere, how it's going to leave you totally affected. I mean, you can ask about all those guys who worked in COVID ward after year, months, how they must have gone through psychologically. So it is different as a journalist and as a writer. Thank you. But just last question is, yeah, please, yeah. Oh, I'm it's really two, sorry. I hope you don't mind. No, you don't. <laughs> okay. So one is like a theoretical question almost yeah. that, you know, when you're writing a non-fiction book, obviously to make it interesting and to show the motivations, you create dialogue. And so, so what's that little boundary uh, that writers like yourself kind of, you know, have for what you can create and what you can't? 
the other question is you know uh, leading to what she said and also what the gentleman here said when you live with these characters for a long time uh, at at times it's possible that you uh, become you know what do i say lean into the character uh, a little bit and you see that even in movies uh, where the director you know actually makes a very bad character look somewhat heroic and like so the question is about the gaze you know how does a writer or a director um decide what gaze to put you know for this character they're writing about and whether to actually lean in and make it sympathetic or actually to lean out and show them for what they are in a sense see uh, honestly speaking i'll first answer your uh, second question that when uh, a writer or a, a director is trying to uh, look at a character they are having several compulsions one of the compulsion is that if the protagonist is a top star like i had a huge fight with one of my director friends i said that what you're doing with this character is not exactly what is there in my book it is different you are showing him in a positive light you're making him look heroic while the guy in my book is very bad he says you don't know i am making a movie spending 50 crore rupee i have to ensure that this guy looks positive and he looks good i have to do this you are a book writer i am a movie maker let me do this my way so my my whole thing is that the the director has a compulsion of pandering to the ego of the star that is one compulsion for him secondly i mean there was a time when the the characters have only say uh, they were from black and white era i mean black and white shades in them they will be either good or he'll be bad but now they want a guy to have multiple shades he'll be good he'll be bad he might sometimes be good sometimes be bad so they are trying to get those grayer shades some now the hero is much more fallible than earlier earlier we had infallible very noble guys now our heroes may be very ignoble and maybe fallible full of mistakes but that's what they're doing so this is the this is the prerogative of the director what he wants to project and then ott has brought its own compulsions now they don't want to see a straight graph of the character they want to see a graph which is going through several ups and downs now they have a problem of making this show for multiple season the audience should keep coming and seeing them and keep seeing that different revelations of this character and the shades so this you will see everywhere in ott my whole point is that how director and how changing mediums have brought about the way a character is handled coming to your first question i have often taught in my journalism uh, lectures that uh, journalism is the art of make doing whatever resources are available to you you'll have to make do with that so sometimes if you are given a hammer and you have to open a screw use a hammer to unscrew that now it's seemingly very impossible task but that's what you do in journalism that whatever is available suppose if commissioner is ready to give a comment fine if a commissioner does not give a comment maybe join commissioner maybe uh, a dc will talk to you maybe if these three guys are refusing to speak to you what will you do then you have to go and talk to a police inspector see there is a police commissioner and there is a police inspector but you cannot not write a story unless you have spoken to someone so it does not matter at the designation but it is able uh, matter that what resources are available to you for me in black friday i did not get sufficient help from mumbai police i don't know why maybe they were scared that their the flaws and their drawbacks will be highlighted but i got fantastic help from cbi they were very forthcoming they came out they helped me a lot and that's how the story like what you see here is in, uh, totally complete and deep only because cbi shared all the documents raman tyagi who is now retired he took me to a room in narman point bungalow number c7 it's it's a room which is much bigger than this one it's full of documents files and dossiers he says refer whatever you want to and you can write this helped me in having an accurate story at the same time whatever lacune i had in my story because mumbai police was not helping it got filled rather overfilled because cbi was so generous with me so that's how things happen and that's how you have to make do with all resources if, if i may just have one follow up to the first part like i can understand for a director but even for a writer like you have to make a choice right so so like How, how do you think about that the choice of sorry like whether to do a sympathetic portrayal or to do a you know like no i honestly speaking i have no sympathies for criminals and bad guys 
I mean, in fact, even when I say that I like women characters, even for women characters, I don't have sympathy if they are bad guys. So, uh, I mean, when you're writing, I, I want to say that you have to have the uh, precision of a uh, surgeon who cannot be, you know, driven by the emotions. He has to be very precise in his work. As a writer, if I start feeling some fun, someone and I start sympathizing with characters, I will not be able to do a good job here. So I have to be like looking at them as an object. For me, this is the phone, this is the bottle. I have to be thinking about it. This is my bad guy, this is gang lord, this is a lieutenant, this is a shooter, this is a cop. And for me, they are just the objects. There has to be no attachment to these. I mean, I've often said that when someone said, don't you feel for your characters? Someone asked me this question, I give a very bad example. I said, I, I, I behave like a pathologist who look at all the samples, urine and blood and stool, he doesn't feel for them. For them, it's just a thing <laughs> which he will help him in getting to some reports and some investigation conclusions, which is what I look at these characters with that kind of emotions. So no sympathies for anyone. Sorry. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.